Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? What are you doing around here? My name is Ashley and I'm a soul scientist on this channel. I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about the difference between heirloom, heritage seeds, GMO, non-GMO, hybrid, what it all means, how to digest it, and how to know what seeds to pick. The season is upon us where we are beginning to choose our seeds that we may or may not want for our garden, and some of these terms can become confusing. This is something I actually hold pretty near and dear to my heart because I actually worked in a greenhouse where I bred plants uh, and I made hybrids based on certain characteristics to develop a new plant which will help feed the world. I can't disclose the company or the plant due to NDAs, but essentially I did this, I've done this, I've made these seeds. <laughs> so it's something that I am genuinely interested in and I am excited to share it with you guys to help you choose plants better. I am working with a seed company this year based in Canada. I'm sorry for my American followers. I can't help you out here, but they are called Zappa Seeds. Zappa Seeds is a Canadian company that actually was started in the pandemic. They've been around for 35 plus years now, but the changes in the economy and the environment caused them to actually try to find new sources of revenue. So they've reached out to me. I have seeds in route to me and I'm really excited to actually share them with you. Um, and I'm excited to experiment with their product this year. If you guys want to check out their Instagram, I will leave it in the comments down below. If you actually want to visit my storefront that I have with them, which I do gain a small commission from, you can do that. And if you decide to purchase seeds from them or some of their seed collections, which is honestly probably the coolest part about this company, then it actually goes towards supporting this page. I find their rates to be incredibly reasonable. And of course, I like the fact that it is a small Canadian company. That's kind of my jam. So without further ado, let's get into the differences between seeds. So heirloom, heritage, this is probably the worst one for me to start out with because it's very highly contested as to what this means. But the accepted definition of this is that anything that was pre-World War II seed-wise that has grown in an open pollination format. Open pollination um, is much different than a hybrid scenario. In open pollination, we aren't covering our flowers whatsoever. We're not trying to prevent different species from getting in so we can get our ultimate species that we want. We are letting it open to the environment so different sources of pollen from different sorts of plants will enter that flower which will produce a very diverse, very hardy set of seeds. For the most part, they have the same characteristics as their plants. And if we're talking from an end of the world, like survival garden scenario, heirloom seeds are probably, or heritage seeds, are the strongest. They produce the strongest boss mama seed of all time. And I talked about this before, I think last year, when I was talking about pollination, but what's happening there is when we end up with that much genetic diversity from plants all over various different people's yards and just from within your garden, we end up with a very diverse genetic strain within that pod or within that fruit. And so when we end up with a fruit that has high genetic diversity, we end up with a bunch of different fruits and a bunch of different seeds that can survive a whole bunch of different scenarios. So from drought to waterlogged soils, high sun intensity, low sun intensity, and it's just all over the map. So if we're talking hardiest, best seeds to survive anything, it would be heirloom seeds. They're also notorious for having some of the best flavor and texture and that sort of thing. So they're favorite, they're up there for me hybrid. So this is what I worked on was hybrid plants. And so a hybrid plant is essentially when we take a tomato plant that's very tall and leggy and we but has really good tasting fruit and we mix it with a shorty, shorter, stockier fruit that maybe has a certain texture. This is very broad terms and we will crossbreed them. 
So we don't let our flowers come into contact with the outside world. Generally, we'll put a mesh bag over them or we'll put some sort of baggie over top of the flower, which will prevent pollen from being lost, but also from pollen other pollinators coming in and pollinating those flowers. And then we'll cross them together to get a new baby, which will have characteristics from both parents. A common misconception with hybrid seeds is that we don't have the ability to grow offspring from those seeds. But those seeds are still very viable because we're not doing anything crazy. We're just taking plants within the same family and we're crossing them together. So we're not doing anything wild or new. Those seeds are still very viable. You'll still have the same rates of germination as the parent plants. So there's not a lot of issue there. So that is a common misconception with the hybrid. Hybrids are not GMO. They're not heirloom, but they're not GMO. You can have hybrid organic seeds or fruits. That is totally possible because you can organically grow hybrids. There's no issue there. It's just we're mixing two seeds that may not normally come into, or two flowers that may not normally come into contact, say they're from different opposite ends of the world, whatever the case is, we bring them together. So in my scenario, when I was doing this, I was breeding Canadian varieties with Australian varieties or Canadian varieties with Middle Eastern actually varieties. So I was um, making seeds and plant families from the same family interact with each other that normally would not be able to meet. The next one is genetically modified organisms, GMO. These are very commonly used in agriculture. It's very rare that you would ever use these in your garden. It's very rare that you would ever get your hands on these in your garden. I would heavily doubt that is the case. But essentially what we're doing here is we're taking specific characteristics that we see in other plants or animals or insects or bacteria and we're taking that portion of their DNA that we want and we're splicing it either mechanically or through chemical aids into the plant's DNA. Sounds sci-fi and that's that's honestly because it is. So say we notice that a tree is particularly good at warding off a specific insect and that insect typically will feast on the crop that we want to grow. What we can do is we can figure out why the insect doesn't like that tree, take that genetic code that makes that insect not like that tree, and then splice it into that plant. So therefore, when we grow the plant, we don't have insects that want to eat it because we have that genetic attribute that deters them away. So on Jurassic World, when they take a cuttlefish and they put it into the new T-Rex type thing, and that new T-Rex type thing is able to camouflage with its surroundings. They're not far off and that actually is kind of in broad terms exactly what we're doing with the plant. Now I know people are scared of GMO and they think it's going to harm human health. FDA, I mean as far as you can throw that, but I mean the FDA does say that you will not be harmed by GMO and GMO actually has its time and place. Um, so for rice for example and even wheat, We've been able through genetic modification, we've been able to actually increase the protein content and we've actually been able to increase the nutrient content of very important nutrients such as iron, zinc, magnesium in the actual seed itself. This is huge when it comes to actually feeding third world countries or feeding people that don't have access to high protein. So it has its place in this world and I do not think wiping GMOs off the face of the world or face of the planet is a good idea. I think it has its merits in some scenarios, but there are countries that do not like GMO. For example, in the UK, you've completely banned Canadian imports of Trifid or from Canadian flax. And that is because we developed, actually at my university that I studied at, we developed something called Trifid flax and Trifid flax is a genetically modified organism. Some genetically modified organisms can still reproduce and this is one of those ones that can repro reproduce and produce viable offspring. So Trifid flax is, they say it's eradicated, but you can still find it if you, if you test flax in Canada, you can still find Trifid flax in our system. So therefore 
the UK actually doesn't buy flax from us anymore because they tested a ship that came over and it still had that genetically modified organism in it. So it can make its way into the food population and then be reproduced and reused. So in some cases for some plants, the offspring is mute. Like you can't actually reproduce from it. It's null and void, sterile if you will. But in other cases, the offspring is still viable. So it kind of depends on the plant, depends on the cross and that sort of thing. So if you're using GMOs to make a crop the next year, it may not work, may not work. But again, as a gardener, very unlikely you're gonna run into this. And the last type of seed is organic. And organic can be hybrid or it can be heirloom or heritage. It cannot be GMO. That seed is then not treated. It is untreated in its entirety. So it should not have any sort of coating on the outside that you can see. And then the parent plant would have to also be grown organically. So without pesticides or without fertilizers. That is what an organic seed is. And it will have germination rates and all that stuff similar to the heirloom or the hybrid. What may happen is you may experience more seed rot in some cases. Um, and that's just due to it being untreated. But Zappa seeds has non-GMO organic certified seeds. So they have non-genetically modified, probably heirloom or heritage, possibly hybrid, that the parents were grown organically and then the seeds themselves are untreated. I hope this helps you slightly in your adventures when it comes to deciding what seeds you want to grow in your garden this year. I'm actually gonna be doing a whole series where I talk about different types of plants um, and I'm going to do an entire section of plants and I'm going to talk about the uniqueness between them to help you determine what tomato plant, for example, you wanna grow in your garden next year. If you haven't already, be sure to grab my book, my planner that I need, which I don't have in this room, it must be on the kitchen table. Um, I'll insert photos here. In that planner, we go through a whole host of things from planning our budgets, planning our gardens, determining what seeds we need, how many plants we need to plant, the care for the plants, and just a regular planner for our everyday lives. So be sure to grab that if you so desire, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.